uphill in an E30 M3 on a twisty road? Yes, please. As I'm sitting here editing the Brilliant Rot M3 video you're about to watch, I can't help but think about a rejuvenation department and overall business and, and the backlog and the many months advance uh, we're booked out for customer cars to be shipped in to go through the workshops. And uh, I'm excited and proud to announce EAG is hiring. We are looking for new pit crew members to join the family. Uh, we hire them to retire them, as we say, and we've got a lot of experience uh, and training to share. Uh, all the things that we've learned over the 20 years in the workshops, getting these cars to that you know, near new condition for a second time, and we're pretty much the full scope. Um, if you think you'd be a great fit or know somebody that would be a great addition to the EAG family, uh, whether it's an entry-level detail or entry-level uh, technician uh, in the paint and body shop as well, uh, all the way to the guys that are at the top of, of their, uh, their field, especially if you know anybody that uh, is really good at editing videos, uh, that certainly would be a welcomed addition. Uh, it does take quite a lot of time. I love making the stuff, but it does take uh, uh, a lot of effort to put it all together. And so uh, we are very excited to have this growth opportunity uh, and certainly uh, looking forward to people reaching out. My email address is right there. My cell number is right there. Drop me a line, a text, an email, a call, uh, all three if you're really that uh, go-getter. We'd be uh, certainly looking forward to, to bringing in as many people as possible, as soon as possible, but in uh, you know, the right people. And that's, that's what is the key ingredient to every business, as, as we all know. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, sorry for this little quick uh, commercial for EAG, but uh, enjoy the, the driving video. It's actually uh, going to have to be a two-part series because I had so much fun driving the car that there's just too much to put in one video. So uh, enjoy. Eric Keller here, Enthusiast Auto Group. Welcome to EAG's Paint Correction and Photo Studio. And today we're gonna to go over this 1991 final model year E30 M3, 26,000 miles, 2.5 liter hot motor, very similar to what we'll find in a Sport Evolution E30 M3. Uh, it's a member of the South Carolina collection and I'll, I'll explain why uh, it went to said collection of such a discerning and very knowledgeable, well-respected enthusiast and well, it's going to be a lot of fun because we're going to do an undercarriage review with one of the EAG pit crew team members. And then uh, we're going to strap a whole bunch of cameras to this thing and go for some fun drives. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I've not yet driven this car. You're going to get some very candid first impressions uh, from somebody that has certainly no shortage of experience driving uh, many different configurations of E30 M3s, basically all of them. And uh, I have loved this model of car since, well, Evan bought the first one pretty much uh, many years ago and we've had them as a staple of our inventory and of our own personal collection since then. Uh, they give me goosebumps to this day just thinking about the, the, being able to go out and drive an E30 M3. And for those that have had that pleasure, uh, you know exactly what I mean. It is an experience of experiences and just the ultimate precision driving M instrument that all other M cars have uh, tried to mimic since. And there's only one original first and, and this is it and, and you're about to go for a fun virtual test drive. First though, this studio is full of unicorns. Straight up unicorns. That, you're like, is that Estoril Blue? Individual spec final model year one owner with just, well, 3,000 and change miles that took uh, this guy about two years to convince the original enthusiast owners to uh, let it go. That's that's something I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of, uh, as well as a lot of other cars that, uh, well, uh, also are exactly unicorns. And so if you've not yet subscribed, if you've not yet turned your bell, your notifications on, this is the way to get that uh, front seat opportunity to uh, jump into one of these cars before others. Uh, the cars that we've been putting on the channel, the Blue Water, uh, the Le Mans, the, the, well, every other car at least has uh, been spoken for in a very short period of time after uh, publishing these videos. And so we're going to keep doing it because it's, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I really hope you guys are too. Uh, it's been a fun progression to be able to do this and do this well uh, and learning it all myself. I just, if you want it done right, you got to do it yourself, right? So um, let's go take these hot laps around this uh, M3 in, in the studio here and uh, do appreciate everybody tuning in and, and hope everyone's staying safe out there uh, and getting some great seat time driving your uh, fun little uh, unicorn like this. As I said a moment ago, this room is full of unicorns and going through and making that paint effectively new for a second time in life is something that we've 
well, I can never say we've perfected it, but we've come very, very close. And the paint on this 91 M3 is certainly going to benefit very, very well because it is massively original. And looking at that light, you see all those little uh, scratches and things. Well, those are all going to go away as they are going away currently on the 9,000 mile one owner E28 M5. We are going to be, oh, a week and a half or two into this paint correction. And while it had to take a little break uh, in process to allow time and resources for a lot of deliveries that have recently been taking place, uh, it is going to be the absolute nicest, the, not, the number one, not a number one, but the number one E28 M5 in all of North America, maybe even a larger scope uh, geographically than that. Uh, it does not come better than that car and well, uh, certainly something we've been taking our time with to do right so that we can bring it to market the exact right way we want to, which is effectively brand new. And that is what we did in 2017 with this Bronzet E24. And uh, as the E28 is the number one to its space, uh, this car is, well, in my opinion, the same. It's an 85 M635 CSI that EAG acquired when it was still on its original manufacturing certificate of origin. It's MSO as it's called. And uh, the car has a whopping 5,000 miles on it and an amazing history, an amazing build sheet. And having uh, spent a decade in BMW uh, Zentrum Museum in South Carolina at the factory, uh, this car was seen by many, many enthusiasts over the years. Uh, the stock original wheels and stock original new in the box muffler, uh, which are the only two deviations from the original build sheet on the car, uh, are included. And it is bronze at beige over Buffalo. The car is, well, it's just stunning. And uh, certainly among the, the best uh, surviving examples, if not the, the very best. And having uh, uh, an amazing history with a full EAG rejuve as of uh, two and a half uh, plus years ago, we've sold it to a very prominent and uh, very, very uh, good friend collector in, uh, in California, where he's enjoyed the car with the Pinnacle E28 M5, the 7,000 mile car that was my former personal car, uh, lived next to this bronze at here most recently. And uh, we've brought the bronze back on trade for a Sport Evo. Uh, the brand new one. So uh, speaking of, well, brand new, this is the Astoral Blue one owner individual 2013 M3 competition package that was a Euro delivery car and has a very, very amazing build sheet and uh, really a great loving uh, story and history uh, by the previous owner. And certainly uh, uh, no shortage of unique options here on the, the window sticker. The car has uh, done just a little under 4,000 miles, 3,000 and change, and it is certainly one of the nicest examples of an E92 M3 that EAG has historically acquired in this interior. It's got to be one of the most unique and original that we've seen on any E92. The stitching and the, the silver, I guess, or gray even uh, door panels, uh, just uh, armrests, I should say. It's a just a really cool, cool car that I'm very much uh, excited to doing a full uh, feature video on this car assuming it stays uh, available that long uh, very very uh, short period of time these gray m2s we can't keep these things uh, long uh, this is a 2016 that's done about 13,000 miles a couple of m performance bits as you're seeing on the muffler there it's next up in the uh, eag photo studio and well uh, executive package three pedal car which uh, of course uh, is going to be a bit more uh, fun to, to, for the driving enthusiast. And speaking of driving enthusiasts, uh, very few people have seen the likes of, of this unicorn. This is an M3 GT. I've been teasing you with this for a bit and we're gonna get the paint cleaned up, get the photo studio se session done, and then we're gonna go out for some drives in this bad boy. Uh, this is the pinnacle of the E36 M3 market. Uh, the lightweight would not have happened had this GT not taken place and uh, been a homologation production of 353 units, uh, 50 of them right-hand drive for the UK market. The lightweight aluminum doors, the uh, adjustable, or sorry, the, the fixed uh, spoiler without the rising blocks and the adjustable front uh, splitter, uh, all lightweight accoutrement uh, as borrowed. Uh, the uh, uh, 126 or so lightweights also had the carbon fiber dash, uh, center console panel there and the dash plaque. All that stuff again was originally uh, produced for the, the GT and borrowed uh, for well homologation purposes when Eric Wensberg decided to build that very, very special homologation car. 
Uh, very few of these GTs, like the lightweights, survived in really good shape and, and, and good miles. They uh, certainly were a bit more cost effective in, in period and um, uh, benefited from a, a couple little upgrades over the 286 horsepower uh, number, which was actually the same output of the Euro, uh, the, the German Ferrari, uh, the M6 uh, Euro spec that does weigh also a couple hundred pounds less than the North American spec cars, given the uh, lighter weight bumpers and the interior manual seats and the lack of a refrigerator in the back. Uh, but they bumped that 286 horsepower on the GT to 295, and that is the S50B30 dual Vanos, which is the predecessor engine to the S54. Well, uh, this uh, unicorn behind us is a one owner, uh, 135 IS, uh, is a really exceptional car that we acquired from the first owner, uh, one of just four built in this color combination of black sapphire metallic over coral red. It's a seven speed dual clutch car that when we're done, like the 28 M5 and the E24 M6, and uh, well, most of the really, really low mileage stuff that uh, EAG will acquire early on in its life, especially from the original owners, has done 2,383 miles. A uh, very cult-like car, uh, 583 uh, 135 ISs were built, I believe, and uh, uh, not very many will have uh, this type of mileage, uh, one ownership and uh, great service history with uh, half a dozen oil changes or so on file uh, in you know, really just near new condition. And uh, well, that's kind of a theme of the, the unicorns in this room. Behind the, uh, the magic curtain, we do have a, uh, a bit more of a, a regular car, but more of a uh, fun driver's car that's a good EAG story because I think this is a four-time uh, visitor to EAG, yet we've only sold it to three enthusiasts, which like the Blue Water M5 of the last video is kind of a theme at EAG. And when you sell your car to us, like the, you know, the first owner of the, the Blue One or any other special uh, cars, uh, even if you're the fifth owner, it's a special car to you. And you wanna say, you know, uh, see you later, not necessarily goodbye forever. Uh, EAG certainly will uh, reach out to the previous owners uh, or current owners of previous owners' cars and be able to pair them back with uh, their cars. Uh, that is not exactly what happened with this one as it came back into inventory and uh, one of the owners we sold it to back in 2013 or so decided to buy his old car back, same VIN, in 2015. Uh, this is a 2001 Amola Red on black, obviously, with 26,000 miles. That is a four-time graduate of EAG's Rejuve program. And, well, uh, those cars have been certainly uh, quite popular, and if you're looking for one of those, uh, there's a first look opportunity on that red one. Uh, back to red uh, on the E30 M3 front. This car started its life in New York with a, a very, uh, uh, well, uh, enthusiastic owner that was interested in driving the ultimate driving machine in its purest stock, original, unmodified form. Uh, the car was used uh, for a couple driving events and that would be the, the basis and nature of the, the small tasteful upgrades that were, were added in a kind of an old school fashion, being able to override and have the control of turning the fan on all the time and being able to disable the ABS, which are two uh, little aftermarket items that were added by putting those buttons there on the dash. And uh, that's you know about the biggest level of um, modification to the car. Uh, it has a set of stainless steel brake lines, but that's about it. It's still wearing its original suspension, original springs, has a stock replacement genuine BMW muffler, which is a very hard part to get today that are no longer available. And uh, you know this car is just really amazing survivor that has some paperwork that most people have never seen for an E30 M3 before and it starts with the original window sticker times two with the carbon copy. It has the original sales sheet showing 37449 bucks. The most recent uh, uh, collector owned to the South Carolina collector, of course, had to add his touch with the, uh, the personalized, well, not the personalized plate, but of course, BMW's home is in South Carolina these days uh, from a production standpoint uh, in North America. And we've got a service booklet with some really great uh, uh, information and a bunch of uh, service stamps from the uh, early chapters of the car's life, uh, even the, um, uh, I think the, the break-ins uh, stamp as well. So uh, that's always great to see, especially with the service document to coincide with that as well as some uh, recent stuff done at the franchise dealer and the, the one thing I wanted to point out was the uh, uh, the engine rebuild of course uh, well, just under twelve thousand dollars done back in 2011 when it had twenty four thousand miles so about two thousand miles and there is a, um, a run-in service done about a thousand miles later with the valve check that all that has been done 
And uh, when I was speaking with the uh, South Carolina collector about this, you know, explain the, the basis of that, that engine rebuild for me, please. And he's like, well, you know, the dreaded oil pump uh, nut spun by that last thread off backwards. And you know what happens uh, at that point, which, you know, that, that does happen on the S14s and something to be uh, mindful of. And he was just driving on the street. This happened on the most recent collector's watch. Uh, he uh, then took it to a great shop that's quite well known for fixing BMWs. And, uh, you know, hey, can we uh, uh, sort this out? Sure, no problem. Uh, well, let's go ahead and uh, put a 2.5 in there. I'm like, so, well, well, uh, you know, Mr. Collector, why did you want to uh, go to a 2.5? He's like, well, more power, duh. And uh, I, I can't, uh, you know, I, I can't argue with that. You know, the European cars do have a little bit more power. The Evolution 2s have even more. The Sport Evolutions have the most. And when you do add more power to this very lightweight chassis, uh, I can tell you that it is very, very receptive to that power. Even though it's, uh, you know, just a couple, you know, what, three dozen or so more horse, this should be doing pretty, maybe around 230 uh, up from the 192. Uh, it does make a huge difference when you add that uh, difference, that change to that power to weight uh, dynamics relationship. And uh, I'm very much excited to get in the car and, uh, well, experience that myself firsthand. So uh, let's go do just that. The acceleration on this E30 M3 is definitely more potent than stock. Uh, it, I would say, is a good 20% stronger and very, very Sport Evo-esque in its uh, output. Driving an E30 M3 upon getting some corners just right is the most rewarding thing uh, for the driver. Uh, you know, it, it's a very, very analog car. I mean, uh, there are no nannies, there are no nothings outside of uh, ABS. And if you want, you hit that button and the ABS goes away. And that really makes for an exciting driving experience that frankly is probably one of the best to learn on uh, for younger drivers especially if you're going to be doing any sort of uh, track um, uh, performing uh, performance or, or uh, that's why a lot of the, the F1 drivers start out in cart uh, and, and have that momentum mentality uh, keeping that moment uh, momentum through those corners and driving that slow car fast and <sighs> driving an E30 M3 uh, fast is a very lively experience that uh, simply just has to be um, uh, you know, driven to fully uh, understand and appreciate. Uh, you do have to drive it uh, relatively spiritedly and, and up high in the power band as that is where the fun happens. And there's a reason all of the DTM motors were uh, tuned up to you know, nearly 10,000 RPMs, upper nines. Uh, and that's, that's where the, the power really comes alive. And this motor has a 8,000 RPM uh, red light uh, limit. It's fun way up there. Uh, oof. Uh, very, very happy with this engine. Um, good job, guys, uh, rebuilders and South Carolina collector. I support your decision for more power. It's a lot of fun. Makes great noises, too. It's got a nice little hot set of brakes on it, too. Good and squeaky. Squeaky brakes don't mean bad brakes, they just mean grippy brakes. And uh, these are pretty grippy and they're pretty squeaky. That's why good brakes are uh, pretty important on the 30 M3 because uh, Bambi uh, 
Had a pretty good clip to it, didn't she? Woo! I don't remember which driving instructor I had that really ingrained into me of keeping eyes up uh, while driving, and whoever that was, uh, thank you. Uh, that has certainly afforded um, me to be a lot safer on the roads and be able to see through the corner of where I'm going and, and be able to drive without thinking as, as uh, directly about exactly what you're doing when you're doing it rather where you want the car to be and looking through that corner uh, certainly is some of the best uh, advice um, with your eyes up uh, I've ever received as, as a driver and, and um, so uh, thank you. fun things about an E30 M3 is, I mean, you can drive it really hard and you're not going to get into really much trouble because it's not a super fast car. And so you can use all of first and all of second and dig into third a little bit. And you know, you're, you're not uh, really breaking any speed limits and doing so in the right environment uh, on public roadways. And uh, it's, it's a really usable, fun sports car that can give you a good amount of thrills for relatively cheap uh, understanding of how much fun it is to drive compared to other cars and while E30 M3s certainly have gotten quite a bit pricier over the years uh, you compare that to, to any of the other uh, cars in this price bracket frankly I don't find them as much fun to drive and this car with 26,000 miles and, and everything that has been done to it by the previous owners and now EAG's uh, Reju program uh, for under 100 grand, you can get into a car that's going to deliver a ton of fun for a long time, and probably some financial solidarity. That you know, it's not really going to cost you a whole lot to own the car when you buy the right one that people are going to want to own and enjoy after your chapter has been successfully written. And I can tell you that chapter will have a lot of these <laughs> from a lot of these <laughs> and uh, a lot of a lot of these, the corners, which is really where the car is the most fun. most fun. I'm sorry to have to cut this video short driving the Brilliant Rod E30 M3, but it was so much fun that, uh, well, just way too much video was created, and I'm going to have to share that with you in another video, including that undercarriage re review with one of the EAG pit crew. Uh, as you can tell, we are inside EAG Super Secret Warehouse number two, and there's no shortage of really cool enthusiast-oriented hardware in this building. Uh, the Astoro Blue M3 E92 individuals made its way over from the photo studio. And, uh, well, there's just a whole lot of stuff in here that you haven't seen yet. And uh, we'll be coming to you very soon in the, uh, the YouTube channel. And if you've not yet subscribed, this is your first look uh, method. Uh, there's probably, I don't know, 30 maybe 40 more cars that uh, we've purchased that uh, well they're not in this building yet uh, and they're not uh, back there in that barn and they're not in all the other warehouses that we've been uh, stashing these cars as the opportunity presents to buy quality and that's that's really what the hardest part is for our job our, our sales volume is not um, sales uh, limited it's supply limited and picking the right ones that have come from the right homes that have the right stories and that are in the right condition that really is what EAG's always been about. And frankly, uh, you, the, the enthusiasts that have reached out to us over the years and provided us that opportunity to keep a really great car and a great home, a, a foster parent, if you will, that's how we view ourselves sometimes. Uh, well, uh, that's, uh, that's what's helped us get to where we're at and, and certainly what w charges us up every morning to do the best we can in keeping these cars in, in great and loving enthusiast homes uh, for the next chapters of their life. So uh, this brilliant rod has had a great life up to date uh, and, and, and certainly looking forward to helping write another great chapter in its next uh, uh, segment. So uh, if it's something that's of interest to you, please do reach out. Uh, I can tell you that the thing drives absolutely awesome. And uh, I, I've really had a great, great time making this video, and, and I hope you've enjoyed uh, uh, learning more about the car. And, and uh, well, uh, yeah. So uh, stay safe out there. Uh, subscribe for more. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to go to bed because it is late. <laughs> See ya.